This is Brandon Jones with Pact Publishing. In this video, I'm going to describe the course Spring Design Patterns and Best Practices. First, I'd like to introduce myself. I've been an adjunct assistant professor at the University of Cincinnati School of Information Technology since the 2000-2001 school year. I've taught nearly every course in the software development track, including mobile development with Android, enterprise application development with Java, web application development with .NET, and also a lot of the introductory computer programming courses which use Java as a foundation. That's my part-time job. Full-time, I'm a software development manager in the retail space. I also have a hobby of working with plants, and so I formed PlantPlaces.com with cooperation from the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Gardens, and also the University of Cincinnati. I developed Plant Places really as a teaching tool, something I could use to demonstrate concepts at the university level. I created kind of a fork of Plant Places, or a feature of Plant Places, which I call Plant Flashcards, and I've used that in several of my packed video courses, including this one, Design Patterns with Spring. And this is my fourth packed video course. The others I've created are Test Driven Development with Android, Create Android Apps with App Inventor, and learn Kotlin by developing Android apps. Now let's take a look at an overview of the course. We will start in Section 1 by discussing Spring Fundamentals. We will also discuss some common concepts that are used in object-oriented programming, including polymorphism, because polymorphism is a very important concept that helps us to support our design patterns. From Section 1, we'll move on to Section 2, where we start our project and we discuss one of the most common design patterns, which is the model view controller design pattern, and how we can use that with Spring. In section three, we'll get to some categories of design pattern, structural, behavioral, and creational. We will talk about the factory method, and we will also have a demonstration of the interceptor pattern. In section four, we'll, we will look at how we can create a dynamic user interface with the decorator and command patterns. Command pattern is one of my favorite, and it's what really got me interested in the study of design patterns. In section five, we'll take a deeper dive into spring annotation and the value of patterns. And then in section six, we will take a look at the template and visitor pattern and how we can use these two patterns to generate JSON. Now, you may ask yourself, why should I learn patterns? If you take a look at what I have on the screen here, it's an if test. It's something that we're very much used to as software developers. But what we'll find as we explore design patterns is that we like to get rid of the if test because the if test oftentimes is an indication that we're not doing a good job with object-oriented design. And something that could be done with an if test can be done much more efficiently with a design pattern. Or if it's done with a design pattern, it makes future expansion much simpler. So that's a theme that we'll see many times throughout this course. Now, what are our goals? After this course, you should be able to understand the categories of design patterns, the ones I mentioned earlier, creational, structural, and behavioral. You should be able to describe the 10 design patterns that we use in this course by seeing them through example. So there are 10 design patterns where I will do an example and hopefully that will help to commit it to memory. Speaking of example, one thing that I like to do to demonstrate a concept is to build an application throughout an entire course and not just do many applications throughout. So in this course, we are going to create a web application using Spring and using several of Spring's well-known features. Spring Boot, which is very popular right now, Spring MVC, and something called Time Leaf. And then we'll even see how we can dip into classic Spring, that is, Spring using an XML configuration file, by including that XML configuration file into our application. So this course applies whether you're starting a brand new Spring Boot application from scratch, or if you have a legacy application written in Spring with XML files. Either way, you'll get some benefit by seeing how we can use design patterns with Spring. The design patterns that we're going to explore through example are listed on this page. So you see model view controller, which is very famous. Factory method and interceptor we talked about early on. Decorator and command. Uh, these two we do one example where we show how you can 
allow a user to select a series of attributes, and then we can give more details of those attributes. Singleton, Visitor, Template, Abstract Factory, and Prototype. We will wrap up with this, uh, Template and Prototype as we generate some JSON. Singleton, Visitor, and Abstract Factory come right about the middle. But nonetheless, each one of these that you see, there's a hands-on example inside this video course. So what do we need for this video course? JDK, I say eight or greater, but really just whatever's compatible with Spring and the Spring version that you're using. So you might be able to get by with something a bit older than that JDK. Of course, you'll need Spring. I don't have it on the slide because that's a given, but you will need Spring, but we'll show you how to get that. So as long as you have a JDK eight or greater and Eclipse, we can easily integrate Spring by using Maven in a POM XML file, which is how we do it in this video course. I have the examples posted into Git, so it would be helpful to have Git, especially if you want to clone my project that I've been using, but that's optional. You don't absolutely have to have Git. You can build it from the ground up just as I've done. I was very careful in creating this course to make sure that all of the software I use over and above the operating system itself is free and or open source. So the Java Virtual Machine and the Java Development Kit and Eclipse, of course, all the subject to their license agreements. But nonetheless, once you have your virtual machine or once you have a computer with an operating system on it, everything else you can obtain for this course without cost.